Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a Russian science fiction horror film, Sputnik. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In 1983, a spaceship is in space carrying two cosmonauts. The co-pilot sings a song that fills the moment with sentimentality. Shortly after, they inform someone on the radio that they are ready to undock their space capsule. Then, they talk about the things they want to do when they go home. After talking, the other cosmonaut, called Mr. Cosmos, presses a button that removes their space capsule from the orbit. Shortly after, they experience violent turbulence. As things get calm again, they notice a strange creature lurking outside the capsule. Sometime later, a man on a horse witnesses their space capsule landing on a remote part of the Soviet Union. As he comes to the space capsule, he finds the co-pilot's skull open, which completely exposes its bloody brain. Then, he sees Mr. Cosmos slowly walk out of the capsule in bloody condition. In the next scene, the medical board members interrogate a doctor, named Tatiana, for possibly inflicting an injury to a young boy due to her method. So the medical board considers that Tatiana has been negligent at a certain level. In response, Tatiana fiercely insists to them that she just did her duty as a doctor. After the hearing, an old officer named Colonel, approaches her since he needs her expert opinion about a patient. He asks her to go with him, so she can personally visit the patient. She seems to be uninterested. But when he reveals that he runs a research institute on neuropsychiatry, he convinces her in the end. He also assures her that he will handle her impending case on the medical board. Later, a military helicopter carries them towards the location. Along the way, she asks Colonel about the patient's medical history. He reveals that the patient is Mr. Cosmos, who just came from a space mission. It turns out that Mr. Cosmos suffers from episodic amnesia after coming back from the mission. At their arrival at the Institute, the Colonel guides her inside. He grants her access to almost every part of the Institute. Then, he brings her to the observation room. They observe Mr. Cosmos from there. The lead doctor of the research institute, called Director, tries to make Mr. Cosmos remember his experience from outer space, using a hypnotic method. But his method seems not to work, so he walks out in frustration. Shortly after, Tatiana asks Colonel what she needs to do. He replies that he needs her opinion about the condition of Mr. Cosmos. She then goes inside the room. Inside, Mr. Cosmos seems to be pleased as he sees her. She asks him about the toy in the room. He reveals that the toy is part of the cosmonaut tradition, so he plays with it from time to time. After that, she asks her about what happened. He replies that he just went on the space mission and completed it, but he cannot remember anything after their landing. Then, he frankly tells her that she cannot decide to discharge him from the facility. Despite that, she assures him that she can help him. So he requests that she visit his mother to let her know that he is fine. In a few moments, she takes the teacup and walks out of the room. After that, she informs Colonel that Mr. Cosmos possibly has PTSD. Done at her work, she reminds Colonel that he allows her to leave tomorrow. He assures her that there is a helicopter leaving tomorrow. Shortly after, he orders the soldier to guide her to her room. Along the way, the inmates doing hard labor get her attention. As they arrive at the building, the soldier gives her the key to her room. Inside, she unpacks her things. That night, she takes a bath and takes some painkillers. As she cannot sleep, she goes outside to run for a while. When she goes back to her room, Colonel comes suddenly, and takes her to the observation room. There, they proceed to observe Mr. Cosmos, who seems to be having seizures. Suddenly, a creature comes from his mouth. She is in shock as she sees it from the monitor. To see it clearly, she comes near the room. The creature suddenly appears in front of her. She intently looks at it, and it looks back at her. Then, it instantly attacks her. Luckily, there is a glass that protects her. She is in shock after seeing the creature. Colonel walks to her and consoles her. He reveals that the creature lives inside Mr. Cosmos while not doing any harm to him. It turns out that the creature came from space, and was brought by Mr. Cosmos when they landed. So her designated mission is to find a way to separate the creature from Mr. Cosmos. Then, he lets her choose whether to do the mission or go home. In response, she asks him why he chose her. Apparently, he picked her, since he observes that she is brave enough to take risks. Apparently, she saved the boy by taking a risk to do a dangerous method. Then she asks him to give her access to every information about Mr. Cosmos, and allow her to have a session with Mr. Cosmos daily. So he gives every information to her. He reveals that they failed to safely separate the creature from Mr. Cosmos, as it already created a bond with him. When the creature was removed from him, his vital sign suddenly deteriorated. But when the creature is with him, he becomes much stronger, since the creature gives him a great capacity for regeneration. 
Also, the creature stays at his esophagus. When it leaves his body, it releases a toxin that makes him unconscious. After knowing all the information, she writes a question whether the creature is a parasite or a symbiote. Later, she is taking notes from the footage, showing the creature leaving the body of Mr. Cosmos. As director walks behind her, she asks him what the creature feeds on. He replies that it eats the same thing that Mr. Cosmos eats. Then, she asks about the information about the son of Mr. Cosmos. He dismisses her question, and tells her to ask Colonel instead. After that, she calls the son on the telephone. Then the scene moves towards a child with a disability slowly walking to get the key. The caretaker scolds him for that. Back to Tatiana, she comes to have a session with Mr. Cosmos. There, she tries to agitate him through insults. She reveals to him that everyone thinks he killed his co-pilot in the mission. She also tells him that he did not deserve to be called a hero, since he left his son in a miserable condition at the orphanage. As she walks out of the room, she orders the medical technologist to test his endocrine system, since the test would reveal what the creature feeds on. It turns out that she agitates Mr. Cosmos, so that she can observe his body's responses under severe stress. Shortly after, she asks Colonel to allow Mr. Cosmos to socialize with the civilian, and let him have a normal life. So in that way, she can get a clearer picture of his condition. After that, they put Mr. Cosmos in a much better room. He watches the TV that broadcasts the news about the space mission. The news reports that they have safely landed after the mission, and are staying in the Institute for Rehabilitation. It appears that the incident is kept a secret. So the people of the Soviet Union are excited to welcome Ms. Cosmos back since they see him as a hero. Suddenly, Tatiana arrives at his room and apologizes to him for provoking him earlier. In response, he explains that he was unaware that he had a son since the mother kept it a secret. He knows about it when he is about to leave for the mission, so he decides to go to his son when he comes back from the mission. Since he is completely unaware of why the Institute keeps him, he frankly asks Tatiana what they need from him. She replies that she cannot reveal the situation to him. Midnight comes, she goes near the creature to observe it. She lays on the floor while the creature mimics her action. Then, she notices that the cosmonaut toy catches the attention of the creature. So she requests to remove the protected glass in front of her. Colonel allows it, but she needs to wear a protective suit. Wearing the suit, she comes near the creature and gives it the cosmonaut toy. Surprisingly, creature plays with the cosmonaut toy. When she tries to touch the creature, she suddenly slips to the floor. She then alarms the creature, and it attacks her. Colonel immediately orders the soldier to remove her from there. Then, he goes inside and comes face to face with the creature. Later, Colonel comes to her room, giving her flowers. She reveals to him that the creature shares the same consciousness with Mr. Cosmos, since the creature reacts to things that have sentimental value for Mr. Cosmos. It appears they now become a single entity. She thinks the creature will become independent one day, leaving Mr. Cosmos in danger. She then requests to take him to Moscow. But Colonel cannot bring him there, as everything is kept a secret by the government. In the next scene, as she observes the footage of the creature, she notices that it is edited. She also notices the difference in the hormone levels of Mr. Cosmos during daytime and nighttime. She then asks director to reveal what they feed to the creature. He then secretly brings her to the creature's feeding place. There, she sees the soldiers bringing the prisoner inside the cage. When the lights turn off, she uses night vision goggles to observe. She then sees the creature instantly open up the skull of the prisoner. As she is completely horrified, she makes a noise that alarms the soldier. Luckily, director calls the attention of the soldier. Later, director reveals to her that they have no choice but to feed humans to the creature, since it greatly improves the hormones of Mr. Cosmos. Apparently, the creature feeds on humans' fear hormones, called cortisol. The following day, she comes to ask Mr. Cosmos for a run. As they are running, she reveals to him that there is a creature living inside him. She informs him that they can separate the creature from him. He then tells her to meet him later at midnight. That night, Mr. Cosmos tricks the lady guard into falling asleep, then sneaks out of the room. Later, he meets Tatiana downstairs. To avoid being seen, he puts the magnet on the camera to disrupt it. After that, they come to the record room. Mr. Cosmos reveals that he is the creature since he feels and remembers everything the creature experiences. It turns out that he already knows everything, but he keeps it a secret from Colonel. Then, he asks her to wait for the arrival of the medical board from Moscow. She seems not to be pleased with his idea, thinking that more people will die to feed the creature. So she abruptly leaves him. The scene moves towards the boy. The boy sneaks to get the key. Then, he opens the cabinet to take a box from it. Back to Tatiana, Colonel suddenly summons her to his office. 
he reveals to her his true intention why he keeps the creature alive. Apparently, he is learning to control it, so that he can use it as a weapon. She then asks him to consider the people they are feeding to the creature. In response, he declares that those prisoners do not deserve to be called humans. He brings her to watch the feeding session at a closer view. As the creature reveals itself, she bravely enters the cage to prevent the creature from eating the prisoner. She tries not to be afraid, so she can avoid releasing fear hormones. Then, she sings the favorite song of Mr. Cosmos, which softens the creature. The director then observes that the creature has evolved to have hearing capacity. Suddenly, the prisoner alarms the creature. The creature then instantly devours the prisoner's brain. Later, she realizes that the creature did not choose the co-pilot of the space mission, because the co-pilot has a disease. Then, she secretly convinces director to help them escape from the facility. He is hesitant, but she forces him to be a man, and to stand up against Colonel. After that, he gives her the medical kits in a black bag. Then, she rushes towards the room of Mr. Cosmos while director guards the door. Inside, she reveals to him that she has figured out a way to separate the creature from him. The creature will exit his body, once she gives him a drug that will mimic the disease of the co-pilot. After the creature leaves his body, it will die by itself while she will bring him to a hospital. But he is hesitant with her idea. She hugs him tightly and tells him about his son. He then agrees to escape with her. Outside, Director gives them the key to their escape car. Meanwhile, Director goes to a room and seals the door. But soon after, Colonel sees everything from the camera room. So he sends the soldiers to catch Tatiana and Mr. Cosmos. Shortly after, the soldiers see them and shoot at them. But they immediately cover themselves. Meanwhile, Director calls the government to report Colonel's misdoings at the Institute. Colonel comes inside the room and kills him. Back to Mr. Cosmos, he asks Tatiana to get the drug to let the creature exit from him. She gives it to him. He then takes the drug. Suddenly, the smelly creature reveals its might to the soldiers. As the soldiers shoot at it, the creature attacks them one after the other. Tatiana drags Mr. Cosmos to the car, and they drive away. Meanwhile, Colonel comes to confront the creature. As the creature attacks him, he shoots at it. After that, he is wounded while the creature becomes weaker. In the meantime, the condition of Mr. Cosmos deteriorates after the creature leaves his body. Tatiana then stops the car along the way, knowing that he will not survive without the creature. Colonel arrives there carrying the creature in a box. She admits to him that it is not possible to separate the creature from Mr. Cosmos, since they become fully symbiotic. As Colonel hurts her, Mr. Cosmos lets the creature attack the soldiers one after the other. The creature does not attack her, and comes back inside Mr. Cosmos. She assures him that they will find a way to separate the creature from him in Moscow. The government forces are also arriving at the scene. But he decides to end the problem there. To kill the creature, he instantly shoots himself. In the end, he sacrifices himself and dies like a hero. Then the scene flashes back to the boy, who keeps bugging the caretaker at the orphanage. The caretaker then gives the box to the boy due to his persistence. The box contains a shoe. He wears the shoe and forces him to walk away from his wheelchair. The caretaker thinks that he will be all right. The boy then reveals that he is not a boy, and his name is Tatiana. The movie ends where Tatiana gets to an orphanage and requests to adopt the son of Mr. Cosmos. Later, she meets the son of Mr. Cosmos outside the orphanage. In the end, she emotionally hugs him. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.